Well, I have to admit it, I guess I'm real old school. When I go to master some new technology, one of the things that I love to do is go out and get some flashcards. Yeah, some index cards that I go ahead and turn into flashcards. I write a concept on one side. For instance, when I'm studying the adaptive security appliance, I might write something on one side like, how do you set the security level of an interface to 75? And then on the other side of the card, I'll write config T, interface, ethernet, zero slash one, security hyphen level 75, and I write out that configuration. Now when I'm on a train, now when I'm on an airplane, now when I'm anywhere and I wanna go ahead and start studying this information, I go through these flashcards and I go ahead and I review using these powerful tools. One of the things that I like to do is take the ones that I know, like my middle name, and place those into one pile, not look at those for a while, take the other flashcards and go ahead and review those ones that I'm struggling with constantly. Well, my students make fun of me for these index cards. And they say, Anthony, take advantage of free tools that are out there on the internet that can help you with this dramatically. So let's take a look at one of those free tools right now. It's called Anki, and I think it's pretty cool. I haven't even seen the Windows version, so we'll explore this one together. I've used the Mac version of this tool. Hey, look at this. While I'm recording this, it's Julia Child's 100th birthday. Awesome. Thank you, Julia. Oh, I'm such a bad impressionist. All right, so let's go ahead and do a search on Anki. Type it right. You don't want to stumble into some pornography site. All right, there we go. Anki, the friendly, intelligent flashcards. And look at all of the platforms that this tool is available for. By the way, if you're using this tool and you really love it, definitely donate. I did already. It's definitely something to consider. As the author said, they put thousands of work, in thousands of hours of work into the product. So we really should donate a little something. So I'm going to go to Windows because that's the particular platform that we are interested in. And I'm going to go ahead and download the latest release. I'm going to be real bold and not get the previous stable one. I'm going to go for the very latest release. Now, I'm going to pause the video right here as this product downloads. And then I'm going to be right back for a look at how we install it and how we start using it. Well, all right, thanks to the miracle of technology, we are downloaded, okay? So let me double click this download to initiate the installation. I'm gonna say yes to this security dialog. I'm gonna do a spousal install here. What does that mean? Yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear and we're gonna go ahead and install the product. All right, we'll close the installation and we'll navigate to the installed application. I know you can't see this, but just uh, trust me, I've popped open the start menu and launched the particular product. All right. Simple little interface and wow, great news for me, this looks identical to the Mac interface. Pretty cool. So it says, welcome, click download to get started or you can, uh, and you can return here by doing file close later. So this is a nice little interface for flashcard decks. Yeah, for decks of flashcards. We click the download button and we can browse shared decks that are out there. Uh, if I do CCNA, for example, I bet you I'll get a whole bunch of CCNA shared decks, and I do. Wow, pretty cool. So I don't really trust anybody. <laughs> I want to create my own flashcards. Maybe we could download one and edit it, right, that someone's created. So notice how easy it's going to be to create. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a test deck and we're gonna go 
and create this new deck and begin adding cards to the deck. Add material. And we get this add material window. Notice how cool this is. This is the basic model, by the way. We can load other models, but we're going to have a front of the card, like global configuration mode. And the back of the card could say configure terminal. If we were interested in a deck that would help us with basic commands. So we just created a card. I'll do one more so you can see how this works when we run the deck. I'll say, um, <laughs> name the router. And I'll go ahead and call this, uh, or give the command. That would be host name ABC underscore router. I'll go ahead and add this card. I'll close the interface that allows us to create the cards, and it gives us options for this. Show new cards in order added, spread new cards out through reviews, and do selective study. So all kinds of options you can go in and set here. When you're ready to go ahead and do your cards, you click review, and here they are. Global configuration mode. Configure terminal. So I show the answer and then I say, look, I struggled with that. So I want to see it again soon. Or I was pretty good at that. Show it to me in a day. That was easy. Show it to me in four days. Or that was very easy. Show it to me in eight days. Name the router. Uh, I'm struggling with this one. Oh yeah, it's host name ABC router, for instance. Yeah, you know what? I need that one again soon. And the algorithm will go to work. It will organize those cards for you. And this is one of many flashcard tools that I would encourage you to check out. Or, of course, you could always stay old school with your index cards. It's totally up to you. Just one more thing to consider in order to optimize and make your certification preparation as efficient as possible. Thanks for joining me.